Do not proceed with your workers' comp case before watching and understanding this video in its entirety. If you have already retained me, thank you for trusting me with your case. My name is Sergio Ardila and I have been the top workers' comp attorney in our Atlanta office here at Morgan & Morgan for the past seven years. If you are only here for information, then I hope you can get some good value on how to proceed with your claim. My goal here is to ensure that you are armed with the information necessary to receive full and fair compensation for your injuries. Over the next few minutes, I will go through a list of do's and don'ts for you to navigate a fair and successful case. First, it is imperative that you do everything that you can to get well. Follow your doctor's advice. Make sure you attend all appointments and follow the recommended treatment. If there's anything the doctor recommends that you don't agree with, please let us or your attorney know right away. Make sure that you report your injury to your employer as soon as possible. In many states, you have 30 days to report your work-related injury, but there's no point to wait that long. You want to get ahead on this as they can try to use reporting delays against you. Keep us informed of your treatment and names of your medical professionals. Start by knowing the names of the doctors and places you go treat right away so you can tell your attorney. It's helpful to have that information handy when an attorney is evaluating and working on your claim. You don't have to report each and every visit to us, but we do want to know how you're doing and if there are any significant changes in your health or treatment. Be honest with your medical professionals. Tell them about any pain and symptoms that you are experiencing and be detailed. Pain can sometimes be nuanced, so make sure to tell the doctors and make sure they understand the nuances of your symptoms. Remember that the insurance company's lawyers can and will argue that failure to report a complaint or condition means that it did not exist. If you have to miss a doctor's appointment, be sure to call or write or let them know in advance that you won't be able to make it. Otherwise, it will go into your chart as a no-call, no-show. The defense will get all of your medical records and show that you are not really that hurt as badly as you don't attend every doctor's appointment that you're supposed to. Workers' compensation generally covers only three things. Partial lost wages, medical care for injuries directly related to your accident, plus additional money if you have a permanent disability as a result of your accident. I have another video explaining in detail these three factors that give your claim value that I will link at the end of this video. Your authorized treating physician will determine your work status. That could mean that you can't work at all or you can work with some type of light duty restriction. And it's rare for a workers comp doctor to put you completely out of work since most of them are hired guns, but it does happen sometimes. If you are taken out of work completely, you are eligible for temporary total disability or TTD. This is usually paid at a rate of two thirds of your AWW for as long as your doctor has you out of work. If you have work restrictions and the employer can't accommodate, you can also be eligible to receive TTD. Talk to your attorney to get more details on this. It is important that you not work or receive any income or unemployment compensation while collecting these benefits. You don't want to double dip or put yourself in a situation where you can look dishonest. Depending on your state, Checks are usually issued every one or two weeks. You are not paid for your first seven days of work unless you are disabled for 21 days or more. And your doctor will likely release you to some form of light duty soon after the accident. The insurance companies often pressure the doctors to release you to light duty as soon as possible, and most doctors succumb to that pressure. If you are released to light duty, you may be eligible for TTD or temporary partial disability benefits. TPD. If you return to work and earn less money, you may be entitled to receive part of the difference between what you were making before your accident, which is your AWW, and your current earnings while on light duty. If your employer does not have light duty work available, you may receive some income benefits like we mentioned before. The exact amount depends on your average weekly wage and the loss of your state. In Georgia, it is two-thirds of your average weekly wage with a top cap. 
That means that if you are a big wage earner, you might not even get two thirds of your average weekly wage as you might hit the cap at, let's say 50% or less. Always keep us posted regarding any changes in your work status. Do not return to work without speaking to us first. The worker's compensation carrier is responsible for your medical benefits, but they control them almost completely. In most cases, the law does not give you the right to choose your own doctor unless the employer violated the procedures at the outset of the case. Any referrals to see a specialist or to have a test such as an MRI or a CT scan or other medical benefits must be issued by your authorized treating doctor. Most people start their medical treatment at a walk-in clinic and eventually get referred to see a specialist. If you are not satisfied with your authorized doctor, you may request a change from the carrier. The specific rules on change in doctors vary from state to state, but once you make this one-time change, it is extremely difficult to see another doctor. Think of it as a gun with one bullet. Once you fire it, it's gone. If you want to change doctors, please speak to us first and let us handle it as there are procedures that help get the best results for you. We want to make sure you get to the best doctors possible. A good or bad doctor can greatly affect the outcome of your case. Generally speaking, all medical treatment must be authorized by the carrier in advance. You are not free to seek treatment on your own and send them the bills. Also, group health insurance companies, Medicaid and Medicare, rarely cover workers' compensation issues, and when they do, there are problems and special considerations to address. Please speak to us before getting unauthorized medical care for injuries related to your accident. There's a real and strong chance that you will be surveilled sooner or later. We don't want to make you paranoid, but be smart. It is what it is. They will follow you to the grocery store, the gym, anywhere where they can catch you carrying things, bending over, twisting, and you simply must be careful. You don't necessarily need to be doing something you're not supposed to in order for your case to be compromised, but even something that looks inappropriate can do it, even if in reality it was not bad. Just be careful. Your case can be ruined by 30 second videotape, which is then misrepresented by the defense. You cannot lie to us. If you lie to us, they will catch you every single time. They know how to find out the truth. And of course, we can protect you, but only if you tell us the truth about everything, period. Do not lie to us. If you have a pre-existing condition of any kind, that is okay, but you must tell us so we can properly deal with it and instruct you on how to address it with your authorized physicians. Me and my lawyers are trained to handle pre-existing conditions. Please don't ever lie to us or your doctors about a pre-existing condition. It is imperative that you provide us with an accurate medical history from day one. No matter how irrelevant or relevant you might think it is, we can let you know if it's important or not. Also, it is better to overshare than to undershare here. Do not speak with your coworkers or anyone in a supervisory role regarding your case. You are required to keep your employer informed about your work restrictions, but that does not mean that they can ask you specific details relating to your treatment. It is best to keep those details surrounding your case between you and your attorney. Don't sign anything without our approval, especially a blank medical authorization, which allows insurance companies freedom to look into your personal medical history without disclosing each inquiry to you. Do not post information or images of your injuries or your claim online. In fact, it is best to not post anything while you're dealing with your case, including anything that shows you doing something that the insurance company will try to use against you. Of course, no one expects you to stop living your life, especially because of an accident that was not your fault but we want decisions made in your case based on facts and not what an insurance company will try to allege as a fact. I know it's common to post a lot online these days, but fight that urge and keep it low key for a while. So again, do not post on social networking sites like Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, or TikTok. Have you ever heard of the phrase, there's no such thing as a dumb question? 
Me and my attorneys believe that to be true. We are here to answer all your questions. By selecting us as your attorneys, we will always do our best to protect your rights and ensure that you receive the benefits you need and you deserve.